Okay, we have a big panel tonight. It's a big day. Milind Rege, former cricketer, was the person who first put forward his name for selection in 89. He was in part of the junior selection committee when he put his name up for Mumbai. So that's a big day for Milind, the Milind Rege. I mean, how many years back is that? That's... 24 years. 25 years. 25 years back. I, we talk about it. Well, <laughs> well done. Well played. Well done, Melinda. <laughs> Shailendra Singh, Managing Director of Percept. He knows the sports business well. He's with us tonight. Uh, uh, Sohail Seth uh, has been tweeting about it. Uh, and uh, just a such in lover tonight is joining us. Arjuna Ranatunga, former captain of uh, Sri Lanka, is live with us from Colombo. Kishore Bhimani, former sp uh, senior sports journalist, is uh, live with us from Kolkata. And I think uh, joining us, uh, well, joining us, uh, also Mihir Bose will be joining us in a few minutes. Uh, let's begin. Karsan Gavri, former Indian cricketer, was Sachin's coach during the Mumbai Ranji team, 94. And Sachin was captain of the Ranji team, which won the title under Karsan Gavri. He's also joining us today. Thank you very much. Gentlemen, let's begin. Let's go straight. Uh, Kishore Bhimani, did he get the timing right? Did Sachin get the timing right? Should he have done this earlier? What a lovely thought it is that we uh, what a lovely thought it is that we come to discuss cricket on the positive side. Something happy. I think it's a very happy day that a great master uh, leaves gives us so many good memories, yeah. so many good things to talk about. You talk about the timing or not, yeah. all I'd like to say is I was among those minority of people who perhaps felt that 2011 would yeah. have been the right time when he was right on top, brought back memories of Gavaskar who had left while he was absolutely on top. <coughs> and yep. I didn't, I agree, being a great Sachin admirer, I didn't want to hear from people, why doesn't he leave, he's had a great inning, he's playing patchy cricket. No, maybe he was left it a little late, but yeah. what a great player. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, no, nothing's taking away from that. Uh, Arjuna Ranatunga, former captain of Sri Lanka, what do you think eventually uh, played on Sachin's mind when he took that decision? Mr. Ranatunga? I think uh, it's up to him to take those decisions. It's, it's very difficult for outsiders to decide when a player should retire. Knowing Sachin for so many years, I know that uh, he will take that uh, right decision at the right time. I'm sure that we all should uh, appreciate that and uh, acknowledge that uh, this great man has done a, a hu uh, huge service for cricket in general, not only for Indian cricket. Rem remember, it's not only for Indian cricket, the entire cricket in the world. And uh, when he decided uh, he should go, I'm sure that we all should appreciate that. No, but just see one second. This, let, let's get it correct. You know, there's no taking away from, uh, from what he's achieved. I did say that to you as, as well. You know, there's no taking away, but... You know, let's be very practical. Ricky Ponting also also retired under certain circumstances, and 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 the question about a, a, a cricketer's retirement is not an illegitimate question. I mean, I'm sure there are certain circumstances which forced him to do a rethink. Now, Milind Rege, who's with me in the studio, Sachin called you today, by the way. Yeah, just tell us about that phone call. When did you speak? I to went on the show previous one around six forty-five. Around six fifty-four, to be precise. Yeah. <laughs> You know, because uh, he called me to say a big thank you to all that uh, some of us had helped him during his career. Uh, very nice of him. But I'm not surprised that, that he's done that because that's what Sachin is all about. He's appreciative of uh, what the what people have done for him. Yes, yes, he has a lot of regard for people. Yeah. And he's a very natural person. He does not get his put on and things like no. that. Uh, coming back to the discussion that you yeah, had we'll earlier, just, yeah. did he time it right? Yeah, did he time it right? Uh, I think, uh, if I know Sachin correctly, He's timed it perfectly yep. because I think, I personally feel he thinks that it's the right time to go because he wasn't doing so well. Uh, he, uh, he's gone on record many a time, Ornab, yep. to say that if I'm unable to contribute for the team, yep. to the team, then I'm going to make way for the others. Yep. And I'm quite sure that uh, thought must have crossed played, his mind heavily. Play, played on his mind? Of course. He hasn't been playing. Uh, he also, uh, Mir Bos, he has not been playing very much. You know, if you actually look at how yeah. much he has played, uh, Mir Bos, he's not played very much in 2013. Yes. Uh, I, when would he play last? Oh, I think in March he played last. So, obviously, there was some thought process going on there. What do you think, Mihirda? Well, I was under the impression he would go to South Africa and retire uh, in, in South Africa. But I think, you know, a retirement of a cricketer, a retirement of any sportsman is that moment when he thinks that from, from now on his life is going to change. You're retired forever. And I remember talking to Michael Vaughan in the summer, the Ashes summer, and asking about Tendulkar. And he said, you know, at the end of the day, whatever Sachin has done, and he's done brilliantly, there's no question about it, he, after he retires, he still has to get up in the morning and wonder, uh, 
what he's going to do. So presumably Sachin has worked out. I agree with Kishore that he might, he should have probably retired in 2011. India were number one, they'd won the World Cup and so on. And maybe that was the moment to go. But who knows, you know, like Donald Bradman went in 1948 when the Australians were on top, you know, undefeated in England and so on. But you know, that sort of timing is very difficult because for a cricketer, and Millen would know this, and um, having been himself a considerable cricketer, that w once you leave the field, that's yep. it. You know, after that, you go into the commentary box, <coughs> or go into <coughs> politics, what you do, your life changes. But yeah, you, yeah, 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 go ahead, sorry. But yeah. Mihir, you know, nice talking to you, Mihir. The point is that if Sachin felt that he was still on top of his game, yeah. even in 2011, why, why, why would anybody want to retire at the top? Why, what's his theory? Because if I can still contribute to the team, uh, am I not being a bit selfish by, by retiring when I'm on top? And if I can serve the game, why not? But no, there is a theory, Millen. There is a th there is a theory. There is a theory, Millen, which says <coughs> that you must retire when the public still wants a bit more of you. You know, and and probably um, given the standards, who, Indian I, politicians have set, that's not a very popular theory in India. Who, who but does, nevertheless, that's a theory to be said. I leave the stage with the crowd saying, "Please don't go." You know. I, I okay. Well, uh, Shailen, the wants to come in. I, I, I tend to agree with me here on one point, uh, which is I think very valid. That there are three personalities Sachin is carrying: one of an athlete, one of a brand, and one of a human being. And to be honest, you know, at 2011, if he called it a day, it would be at his at his complete peak. And therefore, he could actually get off the field and continue the legacy of his brand at a high that would have been fantastic for the whole nation. But I think he didn't do that. And, and he didn't do that branding, for branding or, or he didn't do sport. that for a reason because I personally believe that Sachin didn't know what he was <clears> going to do beyond playing cricket. He doesn't actually didn't make up his mind that if I give up cricket, what am I going to do with my life? This kid has been playing since the age of eight, this yeah, sport. Yeah. So I think there was a bit of a predicament, but 2011 was a spot on decision. He could have walked out as, as big as a brand on the field, off the field, if he called it a day at that time. Yeah, you know, that, that point is there. You know, the fact is that nobody should be able to overwhelm or underwhelm by statistics. But I don't know what, what, maybe he wants to do it in Mumbai. He wants to do it before his home crown. Maybe there's a lot of emotional content going through him. I mean, I wonder what would be going through, through Sachin Tendulkar's sure. mind <laughs> no, no, I, I, today. For sure. You know, what, I, uh, what, that, let, let's get that from Karsan Gavri and Karsan, you know, you were his coach during the Mumbai Ranji team, 1994. Mr. Gavri, good evening. Can you hear me? The Arnab here. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think yeah. is going through Sachin's very, mind? Very, very, very good evening to you. Well, uh, uh, I, I can tell you one thing, you know, uh, if, you know, Sachin personally has uh, decided that he wants to quit the game. And I think if when he has done it, it's the right time because... Uh, all this time, you know, for last uh, year or two, you know, a lot of people, a lot of media, you know, the various things have been uh, saying that, you know, he should retire, he should retire. But I, if he has decided to quit, uh, he, he, has, he has chosen the right moments. He has chosen the right time. And uh, it's a time, you know, for him uh, to go when he plays. No, know, but what happened? No, no, I, 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 I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure Sachin says that it's the right time. But, but I must ask the difficult question. The difficult question is that I spoke to him about a month, about a year back. I think exactly a year back. We're playing a clip of that. And as I said, when I started the news hour, uh, yeah. Sohail, let me put that question to you. You know, I, I didn't find Sachin when I was speaking to him to be willing to talk much about retirement. Uh, it, there was a degree of discomfort when we were talking. It was 35 minutes when he talked about retirement. At the end of it, he says, you know, I'm going to have to answer in some other language. <laughs> and, and when I asked him, what are you going to do after retirement, there was a sense of emptiness. Exactly. Off the you know, so, so I wonder, like a lot of people feel today, See, boss, you know, that, that uh, what, must, what happened recently. I must tell you one thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, all, all this time, so, uh, this uh, no, retirement thing has been going on uh, uh, for a year or two, right? And uh, Sachin, uh, possibly, you know, it is uh, playing in back of his mind. Yeah, yeah. You know, the kind of pressure he has taken for over 20 years, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, that really never bothered him. But maybe, <laughs> you know, this talk, you know, uh, about his retirement, possibly it must be bothering him or something like that. But I, I, I personally feel, you know, it should not. And when he plays, you know, he's 200 in a test match, and if he scores a century, uh, in a test match yeah, and yeah. then the people of India, the cricket lovers of India, not only in India but globally, yeah. like you know, uh, they should come out, uh, janta kehna chahiye ki uh, no Sachin, no test match. Yeah. 
No, I, I understand. No, nobody wants to be put in that situation. You know, I'm just comparing today the retirement decisions of Tendulkar and Ricky Ponting, the two batting greats of our time. Uh, Ponting retired soon after realizing that he'd been underperforming for a period of time. He even admitted to it, I think, at, at a press conference when he retired, you know. Uh, now, I, I, the question is being asked in the context of Sachin, and nobody's, you know, questioning what he has done. But the question is, what really happened? Now, I put that question. Uh, Sohail Seth, do you think he got the timing right? That's what we are talking about this evening. What do you think? A, I think Sachin has always got his timing right. <laughs> I don't think any one of us is in prime position to question the timing. We are not even we are not even in prime position to you know question the veracity of his decision. You know, I I'm not a subscriber to the view that when person X asks me to go away, I should go away. What? It's entirely up to Sachin. What you must remember, however, is as Mr. Gavri said is there's a 200th test. It's a significant number. Yeah. And, you know, statisticians always love numbers. Number two, look at what this man is going away with. He's going away with the three Ds to my mind. Decency, dignity, and distinction. As you rightly said, he's an icon not for every Indian. He's an icon for every young person who wants to start out in life, not necessarily in sport. Yeah. So, you know, you've got to credit the man for the tremendous achievement he has had uh, to his credit. You've also got to give the man credit for one thing. It is an empty life when you walk away, but Sachin exactly. must know that when he leaves the pitches of a cricket stadium, he will never leave the hearts of billions of people who he's inspired. Yeah. So today is a day of saluting the man, not necessarily recrimination, discussion, <laughs> and saying, oh, but you know, why didn't he retire a year earlier? I mean, I would want half our members of parliament never to have come in, forget <laughs> retirement. I mean, but here's Sachin Tendulkar, <laughs> who has it. stood up as a beacon of hope, as a beacon of inspiration. Salute him today. Let today's news hour be a positive <laughs> eulogy okay, to a so man who has walked with grace what and are you, uh, with dignity. What, what, uh, what, uh, what, are you, what are you trying to suggest? So <laughs> I'll say it on a lighter note. Ask, what are you trying to suggest by saying, let tonight's news are be you positive. Don't have, you don't no, have I think serious offence. Thank let, God let, you don't have, you let, don't have let, let me, let, let me, let me so say I, this today. Let me say this today. That, that whatever cricket is today is largely because of Sachin. Sure. Not just in terms of his performances. I think, you know, statistics are one part of the story. By the way, Hemant Kenkre, welcome uh, to, to the discussion. Great to have you in the studio. But I, I believe that for all the questions about whether you got the timing right, he has inspired people. Sure. He, he has inspired people to get into cricket. He has inspired a whole sporting generation. He, as the first big brand, inspired other people to also be brands. So he has broken these frontiers and I think... Personally, I think his greatest contribution is as a role model. What do you think, Emma? First of all, why don't you take us back, uh, you know, memory lane on your association with him and what comes to your mind today? Because how many years do you go back? Well, a long time. 28 and, and almost. I, I would say 24 plus and Tell four. me about the first association you had with such. Well, basically, Mr. Atsarekar, who was his coach, uh, yes. asked me to give him a pair of pads that I had. Yeah. And those pads, as luck would have it, belonged to Sunil Gavaskar. Wow. He had just do, given it to me. And uh, I was just a repository of those pads, frankly. Okay.